Senate do receive the report as well as the details, details of the 2017 appropriation bill. Senate receives a report of its Joint Committee on Appropriation Bill 2017. We reached an agreement that IGF will build a brand new refinery of 150,000 barrels capacity. Nigeria sells deal for a 150,000 barrel per day oil refinery. And the North is delegation on a thank you visit to the federal government over the Chibok school girls' release. Welcome to NTA Network News for tonight. I am Muhammad Kuda Wubakar. There are strong indications that the report of the Joint Committee on Appropriation Bill 2017 will be deliberated upon and possibly passed by the Senate on Thursday this week. National Assembly correspondent Wazir Zayanu reports that the report of the Joint Committee on Appropriation of the 2017 budget was laid at Tuesday's Senate plenary. Presenting the report, Chairman Senate Committee on Appropriation, Mohamed Anju Magoji, described the detailed budget as a critical instrument for economic reordering for even distribution of development across the country. The Senate do receive the report as well as the details, details of the 2017 appropriation bill as compiled by the Senate Appropriation Committee. Senate President Bukola Saraki congratulated the Joint Committee for being the first to present such report with full details attached. This is the first time appropriation has laid the appropriation bill with details. Let me congratulate the members of appropriation for again opening a new chapter in, in, in the service of the, of the Senate. The Senate President also read President Muhammad Buhari's letter intimating the Senate of his trip for medical follow-up in London. In compliance with Section 145.1 of the 1999 Constitution, as amended, I wish to inform the distinguished Senate that I will be away for a scheduled medical follow-up with my doctors in London. Also at Tuesday's plenary, Senator John Owen Eno, Cross River Central, announced his defection from the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to the All Progressive Congress, APC. I formally, with my supporters, resigned from the People's Democratic Party and registered, and, and registered formally as a member of the APC. A report of the Committee on Banking, Insurance and Other Financial Institutions by Senator Rafiu Adebayo, Kwara South, was also considered at the plenary. From the National Assembly, Wazir Zayan, NTA News. Nigeria has sold a deal with the Ajib Oil Company to build a refinery with a capacity to refine 150,000 barrels per day of oil. This was after a meeting of the management of the company with the acting president, Yemi Oshibaju, at the presidential villa in Abuja, attended by the Minister of State Petroleum Resources, Ibe Kachiku. The minister briefed the State House correspondence at the end of the meeting. Uh, last week, uh, with the Chief Executive Officer Worldwide, we reached an agreement that IGP will build a brand new refinery of 150,000 barrels capacity, uh, which will either be located in Port Harcourt or in Brass. And so today, they reconfirmed that, and they're preparing an MOU along those lines. The effect of that new refinery uh, goes back to uh, insistence that oil companies who work in this country will need to begin to migrate away from just uh, exporting crude and begin to look at how to refine those crude and help our, our local capacity to be able to meet our consumption. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, says that Nigeria's economy will come out of recession to a post-GDP growth rate of 0.8% in 2017. This is the position of the IMF Director for Africa, who presented this report at the Regional Economic Outlook for Sub-Saharan Africa, while the, which was declared open by the Minister of Finance, Kemi Adeoshun, in Abuja. Finance and economic correspondent Cliff Ayose reports. In 2016, 83% of sub Saharan African economies witnessed low growth, averaging 1.4%, but 
2017 holds a measure of promise with 45 nations that make up the region rebounding in growth at different rates of about 2.3 to 2.6 percent and a few others at between 5 and 7 percent. Uh, the outlook have... indicates the economic optic in growth uh, is largely very... driven by uh, one of factors in three largest economies, uh, a recovery in oil uh, production in Nigeria, higher public spending ahead of elections in Angola and fading of drought effects in South Africa. I strongly believe that Sub-Saharan Africa is a region which, with tremendous vibrancy, tremendous potential, and uh, should be growing at the 5-6% at least, as it has been doing over the last 20-25 years, and that in the future we will be doing so. From the economic outlook, Nigeria will come out of recession to post a 0.8% GDP growth, inflection at 17.5%, fiscal deficit at 5% to GDP, 1.5% improvement in trade balance, while external reserves cover to impulse will drop to 5.5 months, among other projections. The budgetary impact of revenue loss to the country and the balance of payment pressures remain considerable, and we are trying to mitigate these pressures through a series of interventions, such as growing our non-oil sector base through increased efficiency of tax and customs collections, reduced cost of doing business. Though indicators point to a more positive economic growth for Nigeria, however, International Monetary Fund advises countries with slow growth to focus more attention on microeconomic stability to set for economic turnaround that will be sustained. In Abuja, Cliff Ayozie, NTA News. The House of Representatives has received an executive communication from President Muhammad Buhari notifying members of his trip to the United Kingdom for medical follow-up. The legislators thereafter passed three bills at third reading. One of the bills is for an act to establish the Federal University of Wakari, Tarawa State. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Unko reports. I wish to inform the Honorable House that I will be away for a scheduled medical follow-up with my doctors in London. Length of my stay will be determined by the doctor's advice. While I'm away, the vice president will coordinate the activities of the government. Please accept, honorable speaker, and distinguished honorable members, the assurances of my highest consideration. You are sincerely, President Muhammadu Buhari. After reading the president's letter by Speaker Yakubu Dogara to members, the House also received the report of the 2017 budget from its committee on appropriation. Members passed for second reading a bill for an act to establish the Rural Areas Development Agency, which seeks to provide development for rural dwellers. The bill is sponsored by Representative Uche Chukun Namobi from River State. Criminal activities, urban migration, and to name but a few. So this bill hopes to cure this. It will go a long way in bringing development to the doorsteps of our constituents. Rural areas are already taken care of under the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. Motions on the need to complete the abandoned 132-33 KVA power transmission station in Pangshin moved by Representative Timothy Golu from Plateau State and three others and the one by Representative Shehu Aliu Musa from Bauchi State for Just Electricity Distribution Company to supply electricity to communities in Bauchi Federal Constituency was adopted. Continuous blackout in the areas for that length of time has brought untold hardship on residents. The House urged the Federal Minister of Power, Works and Housing to rehabilitate the Ibadan Ileife Highway, moved by Representative Adedabo Lama Deshino from Oyo State. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. Acting President Yemi Oshibadio received a delegation of the people of Nigeria's, Nigeria's Northeast Geopolitical Zone, led by some governors, National Assembly members, and other stakeholders who paid him a thank you visit over the release of 82 abducted Chibok school girls. State House correspondent Jide Onifadi reports. While congratulating the people of the Northeast, the acting president prayed for the safe return of the remaining girls yet to be released. He ascribed the support received from the international community 
to the integrity of the president. Our development partners and those who have helped in the whole process of negotiation believe in the integrity of the president. I agree with you entirely because I know that they recognize his genuineness and recognize the, uh, his forthrightness. And I think they felt the need uh, to help. And they knew that they didn't have to look over their shoulders, wondering whether there was anything else going on. I think that that has helped a great deal. And um, we're thankful for, for, his, uh, for that kind of leadership, or leadership that, is, that shows so much integrity. He described what has taken place in the Northeast as a great disaster and a challenge to leaders. We, we cannot wait for another generation of leaders. It is this generation, this tenure of leaders, who must do what it takes to resolve most of the issues uh, that face us in the, uh, in the Northeast today. And actively involved in the rehabilitation of the girls earlier rescued and will actively be involved in this process as well. The delegation led by Brno State Governor Kashim Shetima thanked the federal government and Nigerians for the safe return of the girls. In the State House, Jide Onifade, NT News. Close to 2,000 people comprising women, youths and children have benefited from the provision of free medical services and other similar facilities at the internally displaced persons camp located at Durumi within the Federal Capital Territory. Courtesy of the Future Assured Program of the wife of President Muhammadu Buhari in collaboration with a non-governmental organization known as Cry for Help. Stella's correspondent Aliu Kabir has details. This is the second time the Chashua team is visiting the camp in an effort of providing soccer to the victims. This time Future Assured has collaborated with a non-governmental organization known as Cry for Help in providing these services. These include the provision of health services comprising screen of blood sugar and blood pressure, routine tests and drugs for pregnant women. Other gestures include provision of relief materials such as rice, mats, wrappers, cosmetics and souvenirs and other essential commodities. The health facilitator of the program, Mariam Hadi, explained that the wife of the president remained committed in safeguarding the lives of women, children and other less privileged in the society. This is all part of Her Excellency's efforts uh, towards improving the health, well-being and living condition uh, of the internally displaced population. So we have doctors, we have nurses, we have lab scientists for screening, we have pharmacists for drugs, and basically it's just reasonably comprehensive, you know, medical care. May God continue to bless her. And... The beneficiaries expressed their happiness with this gesture. <laughs> From Durumi IDP camp in Abuja, Ali Ukabir, NTA News. The federal government has again stated its commitment to evolve ways of minimizing conflicts and alleviating the sufferings of internally displaced persons, IDPs. Federal Commissioner, National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and IDPs, Saidia Omar Farouk, stated this while presenting relief materials to Nigerian returnees from the Central African Republic, being hosted by the Kano State Government. Abdullah Mustafa has details. Since 2013, the Central African Republic has been experiencing violent sectarian conflict. In 2014, when the violence deepened, hundreds of people were killed while many others flee the country. A good number of such asylum seekers are presently in major Nigerian cities. Kano, for instance, hosts about 1,000. They are the beneficiaries of a recent support by the federal government through the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons. Food and non-food items were given to them to alleviate their sufferings. We've just brought their leadership here so that they can uh, collect these items together with the Hizba uh, committee in Kano for the onward distribution of to the uh, beneficiaries. So we are very, very grateful to the federal government for coming to the aid of these people, more especially as Ramadan is coming. Some of the beneficiaries thank the federal government for the support. 
while at the Kanuga Ben House, Governor Ganduje thanked President Muhammad Buhari for addressing the major security challenges in the country and facilitating the recent release of 82 Chibok school girls. In Kanu, Abdullah Mustafa, NTA News. The management of the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, has been challenged to embrace modern technology to drive its process and rebrand the NTA to attend the status of a world-class television station. Anthony Fosun reports that the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, gave the charge while inaugurating the management board of the NTA. Members of the NTA new management board are Chief Duro Onabule, Chairman, Mohamed Labbo, Executive Director of News, Wole Koka, Executive Director of Programs, Abdul Hamid Dembos, Executive Director of Marketing, Fatima Barda, Executive Director of Finance, Steve Ego, Executive Director of Administration and Training, and Stephen Okwanachi, Executive Director of Engineering. To this new management team, Information and Culture Minister Laya Mohamed wasted no time in driving home the dire need for a departure from the old order and embrace professionalism in practice so that the NTA will regain its last confidence. Television is a powerful tool and a very sensitive platform. If put to good and effective use, television can help shape society, inspire citizens to strive for lofty standards and new horizons. Governments around the world recognize this fact and strive always to ensure that it is run with dignity and responsibility. No other television station in Nigeria is charged with the same social responsibility of public interest broadcasting. Accordingly, the NTA must continue to serve as a tool for national integration. The minister challenged the NTA management in looking forward into the future, leverage on the ongoing digital switchover and reposition as Africa's most influential network by creating a robust content given its capacity, which it has been known for. There is a clear challenge in front of us to take NTA to new heights, to re-establish our social contract with our own viewers and audience to lead the way in keeping the nation informed and educated, and all the while stepping boldly into the new future of digital broadcasting that is already threatening to leave us behind. We must take on these challenges without fear, favor, or distraction. Besides drama and soaps, NTA, the minister said, need to invest in a wide variety of programming types and give depth and breadth to broadcasting. By this, the organization will become reputed for neutrality, factual, and professional. The NTA board chairman, Chief Duro Onabule, assured that the NTA management will in line with the present administration's policy of its agencies being neutral. NTA will uphold professionalism and be fair to all parties. Since this administration assumed the mantle of leadership, efforts have been intensified by returning NTA to its glorious past as a shining example in the national and global television ecosystem. Present at the inauguration were two presidential spokesmen, Permanent Secretary, Federal Minister of Information and Culture, Ayotunde Adeshuga, Director General of the NTA, Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, and former board chairman of the NTA, Ibrahim Buba. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. One of the oldest tabloids in Nigeria, the Daily Times newspaper, is 91. The management of the newspaper addressed the media to herald the celebrations. Abdullah Hegarub bin Nankudu now reports. History of Nigerian media will not be complete without the mention of the Daily Times. The paper established 91 years ago played a significant role to the actualization of nationhood and national development. These are some of the issues to be portrayed at the Times Heroes Award, which will include exhibition and rebranding of the paper to key into the present realities. Let the politicians, let the business people and media, everybody, education, everybody come together to begin to support the media, to give the critical information that everybody needs to survive. 
what we are trying to do, in essence, is that in spite of the bad stories that ever manifest in uh, and circulate within Nigeria, to showcase that Nigeria is not about evil, to showcase that Nigeria is good people, that Nigeria will have intelligent people. The event is to hold next week in Abuja. Abdullahi Gerba Kudu, NTA News. Minister of Education Malam Adamo Abdo has inaugurated the governing councils of 23 federal universities with the church to take the federal government's fight against corruption to their institutions. Adu Adamo also has the report. 23 of the federal universities have been without governing councils since the expiration of the tenure of the immediate past councils appointed in 2013. President Muhammad Buhari approved the reconstitution of the councils of the 23 federal universities on the 8th of April. Inaugurating the new councils, the Minister of Education, Adamu Adamu, said the caliber of the new members demonstrate the high premium the federal government places on the need to have high-quality leadership that will change the fortunes of the Nigerian universities. We decided that the first step in the revolution we are going to have in the universities must turn with the character of the people who mind the councils. So your selection was based on merit. Executive Secretary, National Universities Commission, Abu Bakr Adamu Rashid, said to fully address the council members with their expected roles, the National Universities Commission would be organizing a retreat for them. To keep them abreast of the challenges of governance in the Nigerian university system. In their goodwill messages, Minister of Sports and Youth Development Chairman House of Representative Committee on Tertiary Education and Services spoke on the need to synergize to address the multidimensional challenges confronting the nation's universities in Abuja, Adwoa de Mualso, NTA News. You can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. Still to come, Power sector operators move to ensure public safety with the Calabar electrocution in mind. Details after these messages. From what we have seen, we have the capacity which we can rapidly develop or feed in ourselves. If we don't import rice, we stop importing corn and other grains. Nigeria will have plenty of money to invest into developing industries, especially manufacturing, textiles and so on, and develop iron and steel, and complement the infrastructure development. So really, the opportunities are virtually limitless, and we are very, very aware of this, and we are prepared to exploit it to the fullest. Inspector General of Police Ibrahim K. Idris, NPM, MNI, in conjunction with National Council of Traditional Rulers and Leadership Newspapers Group, invites all relevant stakeholders to the National Security Summit on farmers' pastoralist clashes, kidnapping, and other forms of violent crimes in Nigeria. Theme, forging partnerships for effective strategies to curb the menace of kidnapping, recurring farmers' pastoralist clashes, and criminality in Nigeria. Date, 11th and 12th May, 2017. Time, 10 a.m. daily. Venue, International Conference Center, Abuja. Special Guest of Honor, President Muhammad Buhari, G. CFR, Guest of Honor, Lieutenant General Abdurrahman B. Dambazao, retired, Minister of Interior, Special Guest, the 36th State Governors, FCT Minister, Members National Assembly and Diplomatic Community, Royal Father of the Day, His Eminence, Alhaji Muhammad Saad Abu Bakr III, Sultan of Sokoto, and Chairman, National Council of Traditional Rulers of Nigeria. Also to attend, Honorable Ministers, All Service Chiefs, Government Functionaries, Council of Traditional Rulers, amongst others. DIGHM Dagala, Chairman Planning Committee, Announcer. I can't believe she just rejected me and my camera. She rejected my lights. How can she not want makeup? Maybe when the battery dies, she'll come back to us. Nah, not with a 4,000 milliampere battery. Experience the best selfies of your life. Gioni A1 Super Selfie Super Battery. Winning in hot and dry conditions is hard.
causes the body to sweat, which attracts germs that are easily passed from one person to another. What keeps you so cool, man? Dettol Cool combines Dettol's protection and an invincible icy feel. For super cool confidence, use Dettol Cool. It is with joy that I have received the ex Our Excellency's gifts. I want to say that may God continue to bless and reward her and herself. On behalf of Garuki Hospital, we are grateful. That scenario will not happen. The insurgency has been contained and agricultural production is bouncing back. Nigeria is working towards food sufficiency. So FAO, thank you for coming. We discussed, we're going to need your help in expanding agriculture, in introducing new crops for local consumption and export. We need to make the rural people richer and happier than they are now. We must become a nation where we grow what we eat and consume what we produce. You're watching NTA Network News. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture is to draft a policy that will allow the private sector to play a pivotal role in the disbursement of loans for heavy-duty agricultural equipment that will be provided by the Brazilian government. Minister of Agriculture Aldo Ogbe stated this at an interactive session with agriculture commissioners and privately owned agricultural companies in Brazil. Musa Baba Aliu reports. Though the authorities are yet to finish the arrangement for the disbursement of the loan facility to Nigeria. The Minister of Agriculture, Audu Ogbe, promised that the loan facility will be disbursed promptly when granted. This, he said, will be achieved through a policy that will allow private sector to take charge in the disbursement and monitoring of the movement of the equipment. We will lend to cooperatives or give them machinery which we are going to incorporate in this program. And the tractor goes and works for the farmer for a certain fee. We can then work out an arrangement where government subsidizes the rent to that farmer. The proposed policy is expected to provide full utilization of all kinds of agricultural equipment value chain from the manufacturers to the end users. Nigeria will be granted to pick from any uh, uh, manufacturer in Brazil, equipments that are relevant to the uh, value chain development that we have uh, identified. And with this mechanized system that will be coming very soon, I'm both being hopeful that someday we're going to sign this agreement and Imo State will have their share of equipment. So we are developing our data so that we will capture all the farmers in Plato State to be able to key into the various uh, uh, value chains. From Sao Paulo, Brazil. Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. The federal government has been implored to prioritize the development of a template that will drive the Niger Nigeria's aspiration to be among the mega producers in the oil farm sector. This was the position of stakeholders at a workshop organized by Solidarity West Africa, who highlighted the opportunities in the sector, which they see is capable of addressing the economic challenges of the nation. Kunle Adeye reports. The oil palm sector was one of the strongest pillars of Nigeria's economy in the First Republic. But over the years, successive administrations appear to have paid less attention to the sector. 
As a result, Regional Director of Solidariat in West Africa, Isaac Giamfi, says the presence of the agency in Nigeria is to identify the major challenges undermining the sector with a view to coming up with initiatives to complement government's effort. This could be in the areas of technical assistance to farmers and collaboration with relevant stakeholders. If all palm is prioritized as one of the key commodities, like we do for cocoa and oil, then uh, Nigeria could be uh, the leader when it comes to oil palm production. Its operations in four West African countries, including Nigeria, under sustainable West Africa palm oil program intends to achieve increased productivity and profitability of small to medium scale enterprises in the palm oil sector. Representative of the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria and the president of Oil Palm Growers Association of Nigeria said government and the private sector must prioritize the oil palm sector. We get to learn a lot from them. You know, they, they are all over the world, so they bring in experiences from all over the world. This particular oil palm is something that can sustain Nigeria, even without the crude oil. Solidariat, which has presence in 52 countries of the world, is currently doing business in Edo, Delta, Undo, Akwaibom, and Cross River states. Its funding requirement is supported by the Dutch government in Abuja, Kunle, Adeyeye. NTA News. The 15th meeting of power sector operators in Jos Plateau State has agreed to disconnect power supply to buildings and structures beneath high-tension electricity infrastructure. The meeting also advises Nigerians against illegal connections to power lines. Hamza Musa Magafi reports that the meeting chaired by the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Raji Fashola, the minister, he says, it, the initiative is for safety and to avoid reoccurrence of the electrical accident at the Calabar Television Viewing Center. Operators at top level of decision making and host Governor Simon Lalong, as well as the chairman of Joss Electricity yeah, Distribution, Yaele Ahmed, attended. The meeting regrets and observes a moment of silence for the victims of Calabar electrical accident in April as it reiterates the observance of safety regulations. Similarly, customers with fast reading meters in some parts of JAWS are expected to have some reliefs with plans by JAWS Electricity Distribution and the government to rectify the situation. The meeting also acknowledges progress by the National Integrated Power Project, NIPP, on the completion of host community projects around its infrastructure in designated areas of the country. On the need to escrow account from revenues accruing to the sector, the meeting faults inaccurate information on the matter by the Nigerian electricity distributors earned. As that's the nature of human beings. We see things sometimes differently. But the important thing is that we must be able to present a common front of consensus about how to solve the problem. Uh, we are moving towards from petrol to agriculture and even this value chain. All this will require power. The customer has a role to play in protecting these assets from vandalization. The customer has a role to play in ensuring that timely payments of bills. The customer has to ensure that they avoid collusion with corrupt staff. Other highlights include the remittance of $160 million as international customer payments by Bene and Niger Republics. Hamza Musamak LP, NTA News. Members of the management team of the Federal Rules Safety Corps from across the country are meeting in Enugu to review FRSC's 2017 first quarter operation strategy. The meeting is expected to fine-tune its operations for greater efficiency. B.T. Ohebame has the report. The officer's strategic section is a critical platform used by the Corps to review its strategic goals for the year. The second quarter strategic section was attended by 203 unit commanders, 37 sector commanders, and 12 zonal commanding officers who are expected to be armed with the peculiar challenges of the operational areas. The Corps Marshal FROSC Boboyo Yeyemi explains that the meeting is important because it is coming on the heels of the first quarterly session during which the 
court tested the efficiency of its 2017 corporate strategic goals set to review their performance with a view to improving on it. It's uh, compulsory for us to always have a review session like this. We look at some of the recent developments in the core and in the nation and uh, we have major problems that has to do with the excessive overloading and that uh, we've just commenced the implementation of speed limiting device. We need to look at after three months how we are feared. It's an attempt to make us do better. We'll be able to go back to our respective states to ensure that whatever we have decided upon here is equally carried out there. The Federal Road Safety Corps boss had on arrival in Enugu inspected the Guard of Honor mounted by the Enugu Zona Command in Enugu, Beauty Egobami, NT News. Directorate of State Security ordered to produce Ifain Uba in court. Details of these and more with Ademola Dewey in Lagos. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. It's not Demola taking the news, but Jennifer Igwe. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. Now, the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has ordered the Department of State Security Services to unfailingly produce the former gubernatorial candidate in Anambra State and the managing director of Capital Oil and Gas Limited, Ifanye Oba, in court on Friday, the 12th of May. Justice Mohammed Idris of the Federal High Court gave the order today in Lagos. Vera Chimuba has the details. The oil magnate and managing director of Capital Oil, Ifanye Oba, was arrested by the State Security Services last Friday for his alleged theft of petroleum products valued at 11 billion naira, stored at his tank farm by the NNPC, following an expertise application filed by Uba over what he described as unlawful detention by the DSS. Justice Mohammed Idris of the Federal High Court granted the order and asked DSS to show cause as to why he should not be unconditionally granted freedom. Oba, through his counsel, informed some, informed Justice Idris that Ifa Yoba had been in detention since the 6th of May. She prayed the court to direct the DSS to release Oba so as to prevent the security agency from coercing him to accede to whatever conditions it imposes on him in exchange for his freedom. The DSS had maintained that Oba is being detained over his alleged involvement in actions inimical to national interest and public order. The DSS spokesperson, Tony Uyo, had in a statement said the DSS is statutorily mandated to investigate economic crimes of national security dimension. In Lagos, Viera Chumuba, NT News. Plans are on the way for the establishment of six industrial parks of the Nigerian Export Processing Zones Authority, NEPSA, after the passage of the 2017 budget, which will assist in enhancing economic growth and employment generation. This was disclosed by the managing director of the organization, Emmanuel Jimmy, during his familiarization visit to Eco Atlantic and Lekki Free Trade Zones in Lagos. The extensive tour by the managing director and his management team began from Eco Atlantic City, where facilities were inspected to ascertain the level of work done. Officers satisfied by the progress made so far, the managing director explained that the adoption of the free trade zones in the country will fast track the diversification of the economy, which is in line with the agenda of the present administration for economic prosperity. How do we uh, get these foreign enterprises to come here and help us ginger up our economy? Mr. Emmanuel Jimmy and his team headed to the Lekki Free Trade Zone and Lagos Trade Zone where they were conducted round construction sites, processing plants, refinery and fertilizer sites, proposed lucky port, as well as factories. Upon completion of these, he noted that the trade zones will attract foreign direct investment, as well as promote the non-oil sector. Creating a trade zone in the sense that we're talking about is to make certain that all of these uh, facilities are in place uh, and so that when investors come, uh, they can easily do their business. Stakeholders also comment on the projects. The enthusiasm shown by, by this new administration, we're, we're very sure that um, we'll, we'll achieve all the goals and even exceed them. The port will be uh, a key role for the import and export uh, through the seaside. The Nigeria Export Processing Zones Authority is Nigeria's investment promotion agency, saddled with the responsibility to facilitate investment into the free zone areas in Nigeria. 
You're still watching NT Network News, which you from the Lagos Network Center. We still have more reports on the news from Abuja with Kudu after this timeout. Stay with us. Oh, it's happy hour. <laughs> so, you want a free Coca Cola, but you have to drink it here. A hectic lifestyle or overeating can cause a burning pain in your chest. That's hump. Take Gaviscon. One dose relieves in three minutes to soothe the pain of heartburn. It goes straight to the source to work for hours, providing long-lasting relief. <sighs> That's why I recommend Gaviscon. I recommend Gaviscon. Gaviscon, fast relief you can actually feel. If symptoms persist after three days, consult your doctor. Goodness of real orange pulp in every bowl. Where's the pulp? Five Alive Pulpy Orange. Now in your neighborhood. I can't believe she just rejected me and my camera. She rejected my lights. How can she not want makeup? Maybe when the battery dies, she'll come back to us. Not with a 4,000 milliampere battery. Experience the best selfies of your life. Gioni A1 Super Selfie Super Battery. Issues in the sports sector remain one of the most debated among Nigerians. Due to the passion, followership, government involvement, impact on Nigeria's external image on our national life, in the sports parliament. The NTA offers Nigerians deep views on issues with experts in the sports sector, offering in-depth analysis, hindsight, insight, and foresight towards elevating Nigerian sports to the zenith of the floor of the sports parliament. The benefits that accrued in school sports, it is the bedrock of any nation. A few Nigerians wanted the status quo to continue, so um, I don't think we should put all Nigerians and say Nigerians don't follow the trend because the smart ones, we are following the trend. The National Sports Lottery Fund, shrouded in secrecy. The fact that uh, the Super Eagles played an NTA, not only NTA, no Nigerian broadcaster, in fact, no broadcaster anywhere in the world from our records was able to uh, bring that match. It's a matter of concern. Issa Hayatu was president for 29 years. He lost the election in Addis, and that's it. It's gone. Sports Parliament, a unique platform for sports discussions, showing live on the NTA, Thursdays at 11 p.m. Keep a day with the parliamentarians. The eyes have it. Nigerians. Suicide bombers are not spirits. They are not ghosts. They are human beings like you and me. They live amongst us. They are your neighbors. They are your friends today, but terrorists tomorrow. So you must know your neighbor now. Security begins with you and me. Know your neighbor. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects, and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. This is NTA Network News coming to you live from our Abuja Network Studios. Joy Uzo now brings us business news. 
Education and security remain critical to human development in Africa to foster growth and enhance productivity in the private sector, which is the anchor of strong economies across the world. Speaking in Abuja at the IMF Regional Economic Outlook presentation, Professor Ade Donyi Salami of the Lagos Business School said governments in Africa must ensure they become less of a risk to the economies they superintend in order to protect investors and their investments. First, global economic conditions, which is where terms of trade, commodity prices are important. Second, macroeconomic stability. He said there is a strong need to mobilize resources and understand where private capital can thrive. The federal government has raised concerns over the activities of rice smugglers that have been threatening the production initiative of government. Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Aldo Ogwe, said government will engage neighboring countries towards redressing the development. We'd like to advise our neighbors, some of them, who believe that the ECOWAS Treaty means that Nigeria is a volunteer nation for economic suicide. We have no such plans of destroying our own economy to make any neighbor happy. Local equities closed strong Tuesday, sustaining a bullish hold on the Nigerian stock exchange. The NSC or share index closed the session at 26,756.21 points, advancing by 1.28%, while the market capitalization rose to 9.249 trillion naira. 539 million equities were traded by investors in 4,519 deals, valued at 2.815 billion naira. FCMB traded a whopping 243 million shares to top activities and was trailed by a distant Zeni Bank and UBA. Orlando led the gainers with more than 10% and was followed by Fitzin Healthcare and Transcop, while the losers were led by Link Assurance, Dangote Sugar and Total. And that's it on Business Network News. We continue. The Buhari Friends Organization Network for Nigerians at home and in the diaspora, regardless of religious affiliations, has organized another edition of Prayer Summit for President Muhammad Buhari and Peace in Nigeria. Chidima and son Agomo has details. Prayer being the primary method of communication between God and man plays an important role in every religion. As his friends we are, we say no way we will stand by him at all times. And we pray for the country for us to have peace, unity and stay with one love. The group also prayed for the progress and peace of the nation. Buhari Friends Organization Network is a non-governmental organization, a political support group that was established in 2013 to support APC movement. In Abuja, Chidiman Sinagomo, NTA News. In line with the Buhari administration's drive to reposition Nigeria among the Committee of Nations, the National Orientation Agency organized a value reorientation program for secondary schools in the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. The forum aims at inculcating positive attitudes in youths at early ages. Uche Mwizu reports. It is common knowledge that crimes like kidnapping, vandalism, among others, are committed by the youths. This group, regrettably, form a larger percentage of the world's population. Therefore, building positive attitude of these young ones becomes imperative. And this is what the National Orientation Agency sets out to do with the theme, We Embrace Change. The idea is actually to expose the children to our national core values so that they appreciate the value of hard work, the value of integrity, the value of respect for constitutional authorities, for integrity in service, for self-reliance, for tolerance as well. Our mission statement as a television organization, the NTA, the largest television network in Africa, is to project the true African perspective. The values we impart into the younger generation so that the future of the country will be great and the future will be greatly ensured. The decadence is the, in the system is, is overwhelming. The only way we can get it right is if we start 
when they are young. It's time to, to, to join President Buhari in the fight against corruption. It shouldn't be President Buhari's fight, it should be our fight. The interactive session created an avenue for the students to take Nigeria to the highest level in future. I'm going to improve on my talent and my skills, do more work than these present leaders now and improve our country. This program is expected to be replicated in all states of the country for better results. Uche Nwizu, NTA News. Interpol Abuja Bureau has warned Nigerians to be wary of promises of juicy overseas jobs and opportunities, noting that traffickers also use this as baits. Commissioner of Police Interpol Abuja Bureau Olushala Zubair stated this and gave this warning while repatriating seven Bangladeshi nationals trafficked to Nigeria instead of Europe, where they were initially promised. Edino Justice has details. Hero Kazan is one of the seven lucky Bangladesh nationals rescued by the Interpol Abuja National Bureau on the 9th of March this year. He is happy and grateful to Nigerians that they are going home. Today I go to Bangladesh when I see my family and when I see my friend. Nigeria is a very good country. I am Mr. Dale very well. Everybody is helpful. Interpol is all about cooperation. Narrating how they were rescued, Commissioner of Police Interpol, Olushala Zuberu said they got information via Interpol, swung into action and recovered the victims from an hotel where they were kept by yet-to-be-identified trafficker. He warned on people making a desperate journey without official documentation, saying these ones were lucky. The visa they got for them, the visa for Nigeria, was from the Republic of Benin, whereas they were promised to go for work in Europe. So this is happening everywhere, all over the world, even to Nigerians also. There are people that will come to entice them, that they have jobs to offer them outside the country for them to go and see greener pasture, and they end up being trafficked. Some of the Bangladesh officials who won't speak on camera commended the quick response of Interpol officials and the humane treatment throughout their stay in the country. The warning here is, grasses out there might not be that green. Edina Justice, NTA News. Our head, Global Tidbits and some sports news. Don't go away. On the quest for boosting the economy, is the ease of doing business in Nigeria, the presidential initiative. This is the focus on Tuesday Life edition of this week. Tuesday Life, incisive, educative, and informative. Don't miss it. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAVDAC laws, national, regional, and international collaborations, cutting-edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service. NAVDAC impacts upon everything we do, including water we drink, the food we eat, they are important organs to the development of this country. And everybody should come out and join them and support them and help them to achieve the greatest benefits and success that they need to record. Let us support NAVDAC to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAVDAC, safeguarding the health of the nation. Now for some reports and major highlights of international news. South Africa to produce affordable indigenous smartphones. Plus, the United States President Donald Trump authorizes military to equip Kurdish forces fighting in Syria. For more on global tidbits, let's join Chimdema in the BC. Local content is South Africa's agenda as it plans to mass produce the first ever African smartphone to advance technology in the continent. The production will commence next month. From Kenya comes a report that the United States government has withheld $21 million out of its $650 million health aid package to Kenya, citing corruption as reason for the decision. Kenya's health minister said the ministry is committed to prudent financial management and accountability. 
and the International Criminal Court, ICC, is probing allegations of human trafficking, killings, rapes, and torture of migrants crossing Libya into Europe. It's, however, investigating if such cases fall under its jurisdiction. In another development, South Korea's liberal candidate Moon Jae-in has won the presidential election with over 41% of the votes, while the conservative candidate